Christ is risen. The Lord is risen in thee. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. With the Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson today is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter beginning in the 14th verse. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, and you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hand of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright and among the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who have pleasure in them. His work is worthy to be praised and held in honor, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his marvelous works to be had in remembrance. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He has given food to those who fear him. He shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works, that they may give them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are true. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people, 
He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who live accordingly. His praise endures forever. The second lesson appointed for today is a reading from St. Peter's first epistle, the first chapter beginning in the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but are written. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and holy, have mercy upon us, and grant that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will always be pleasing in my sight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, St. George Parish. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you this morning. And our colleague today, one word in particular that captured my attention. Reconciliation. We address God as Almighty and Everlasting, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation. Reconciliation is a word that we are probably all familiar with, one which has application to many things in our lives. 
We may seek reconciliation with an estranged loved one. We may seek reconciliation of thoughts, ideas, or even of accounts. We may seek reconciliation between nations in order to prevent or to bring an end to war or to political conflict. At its core, the concept of reconciliation means to bring together, to restore or to resolve, to bring about consistency or congruence. If we are reconciling thoughts, ideas, or theories, we are seeking to establish common understanding or agreement. If we're reconciling accounts or ledgers, then we're seeking consistency and congruence, one to another, and more importantly, congruence with reality. If we're seeking to reconcile within the context of our relationship, then we are looking to overcome hurt or injury. We are seeking restoration, perhaps reconnection. We are seeking peace. In our lesson from the Holy Gospel, St. John tells us that Jesus greets the apostles three times with the blessing of peace. It was and it remains the most common greeting in Jewish and in Middle Eastern culture. The concept of peace as it was understood in its Jewish context and in the context of one's relationship with God is most accurately understood as referring to nothing missing and nothing broken. No estrangement or alienation, nothing withheld. Full congruence and consistency with God, within whom all reality exists exclusively. It was through the Paschal Mystery, which is the Passion, the Death, the Crucifixion, and the Resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ that the Covenant of Reconciliation was established. The means by which true peace may be realized, for true peace can only be found in the reconciliation with God. The Church is called to this ministry of reconciliation, the foundation of evangelism, of the ministry of the Church, must always be reconciliation. In the rite given in the Book of Common Prayer for the Sacrament of Holy Orders to the Priesthood, at the point where the bishop lays hands on the ordinate, he prays these same words of Christ from the Gospel lesson today. Receive the Holy Spirit for the office and work of a priest in the Church of God now committed to you by the imposition of our hands. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Be a faithful minister of God's holy word and sacraments in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The work of the priest in the church, and arguably the work of the church in this world, is the work of reconciliation. To bring about full communion between humanity penitent and our loving and forgiving God through the Paschal Mystery. This is why this season of Easter, or Pascha, is so important. It is through the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus that this reconciliation is made possible, that peace for each of us is made possible. It is through this reconciliation that we are saved from sure death, from despair and darkness, from alienation from God. We are indeed born again, a rebirth from the pitiful state of humanity, lost in sin and darkness, without hope, without direction, without God, and brought to a state of peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, reconciled to God, congruent and consistent with God, our eyes open, our hearts now attuned. It is for this reason that St. Peter identifies your faith as more precious than gold. For through faith in the resurrection of Jesus, the Paschal Mystery, is brought about the salvation of our souls. God in his love for you and his complete understanding of humanity has established this covenant through Christ that we may be saved, reborn, and continually renewed through his word and sacrament. This work of reconciliation is a process which unfolds throughout our lifetimes, 
beginning with the work of the Holy Spirit to bring about the faith with which we might confess Jesus as our Lord and then consecrate our lives to him. We are strengthened through the grace of God received in holy baptism and in the body and blood of our Lord, in the confession and forgiveness of sins and in every work of the church and in the hearing and studying of Holy Scripture. God in his mercy, he has redeemed us, and he has promised his continued mercy in the midst of our continued struggle. We live in a fallen world and struggle with temptation each and every day. We have an enemy who is very real and very interested in leading each of us away from the God who loves us. We are assaulted at the core of our humanity, encouraged by a culture of our own design to give in to the disordered desires and affections, which alienate us from God, which draw us further and further into the darkness. But there is always the hope of reconciliation. We are never lost beyond redemption. God's mercy is inexhaustible. His forgiveness always available for those willing to repent. The walk of faith is one of continuous reorientation to God, seeking through the loving and the life-giving work of the Holy Spirit to better understand those ways in which we have strayed, and seeking the grace of God to reorient ourselves to Him time and time again. Every minute of every day we should seek to ensure that we are facing our Lord. Every ministry of the church is rooted in this endeavor of reconciliation. Every sacrament given by God for the work of the church is to bring about reconciliation and to continuously reorient us to God, to reorient us to the God who loves us, who understands us, who desires us, and who wants to bless us with peace. Let us pray. Almighty and loving Father, in your great mercy, you have promised the forgiveness of sins to all who repent and who turn to you. We pray for your grace that we may faithfully examine ourselves, reveal to your faithful people those areas of corruption and sin, and give us each the grace to repent, to reorient ourselves to you by the power of your Holy Spirit. We praise you. And we thank you for the work of reconciliation through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and evermore. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. 
We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and God the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you would lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness, and so guide and direct their leaders, especially Donald, our president, that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to your servants, Foley, our Archbishop, and Derek, Mike, and Mark, our bishops, that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word, and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word, and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world, and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Especially we remember those requests that have been made known throughout our parish. We pray that you would strengthen each and every one of us in mind, body, and spirit. You who know the desires of our hearts and the needs in our lives. We pray, O Lord, that you would minister to each and every need by the power of the Lord and the Spirit. And Lord, we remember our world who continues to suffer with sickness and fear. We pray that you would bring strength and healing to each and every body throughout this world, that you would protect us from disease, and that you would continue to comfort and strengthen your people. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear. We ask that your will for them may be fulfilled. We ask you to give us the grace to follow in the good example of all your saints, that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now all who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and who seek to live in love and charity with your neighbors, and who intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and offenses, which we have committed by false word and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your righteous anger against us. 
We are deeply sorry for these our transgressions. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in the midst of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised the forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, may he have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you of all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the words of St. Paul, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full attention. But Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. In the words of St. John, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. They shall not appear before the Lord empty him. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. Ascribe to the Lord the glory through his name. Bring an offering and come to his courts. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O oh Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. Mm, Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty, and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you to the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was offered for us 
and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father. For in your tender mercy, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and sanctification for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. And now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and to sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, so we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy and sufficient, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these holy gifts the memorial your Son commanded us to make. Remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And we earnestly desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, asking you to grant it by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we in your whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy, because of our many sins, to offer you any sacrifice, yet we ask you to accept this duty and service we owe, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For it is by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as Christ our Savior has taught, we are bold to pray. Mm -hmm. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. 
Christ our Passover and sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood. And that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen. Then, of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Then, of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Then, of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries, for the spiritual truth and the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. 
and for assuring us through this sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us, that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you all. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.